Hello, my name is Eduardo and today I am here with another tutorial and this tutorial it is for App Inventor or Thunkable or even App Builder or another similar uh, server okay, based on App Inventor. Well, for this tutorial I will be using Thunkable, okay? And well, this is a tutorial I did some time ago for App Inventor and now I just uh, remade the tutorial okay um and i made it in uh, as i told you in uh, thunkable well the idea it is here is to show you this is a button to show you this simple animation with a button if you check it is a kind of um, like bouncing or wobbling or like a rebound effect for a button I am based this thing, okay, based on the. I was reading some information some time ago about physics and the springs physics, and it's many things. Then I found something about that this is Rebound, a simple library that models springs dynamics for the purpose of driving physical animations, okay? Rebound was original, uh, originally written in Java to provide a lightweight physics system to Facebook Home and chat heads. Anyway, here is the website, if you want you can check it, okay? And I use some things from here and from other websites uh, where they were like showing something about Rebound, okay? So, and I adapt this to App Inventor and I will show you how to do it. Okay, if you check here, we have a, here an example from the original page, so it's quite similar, you can adjust this, okay, and now just have it with these values, but later you will see that you can modify these things, okay, also in this page you can find some information about rebound, okay so you can have some examples here the demo is not working because of my java okay but it's quite the same this image getting like small and you can just like modify the friction and the tension okay and also it's a uh, it tells you who is using rebound okay flow evernote where for example spring animation behind its floating new node etc 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 so and i made this thing for buttons okay so you can use it also with sprites and other components that have variable things so you will see it so now let's go to thunkable and now here in thunkable we are going to create a new screen i added ah in the screen okay i am adding a new screen just to show you the process okay but it's very important to set your screen number one in responsive because we are going to be using a uh, percentage okay percentage values to adjust everything in the screen so now we go to the screen number two just to start over again and i just created this i add here in the screen i just change the color i center horizontally then i added an horizontal arrangement for the button and i center these uh all the things inside this horizontal arrangement i just make it fill parent fill parent just for now it is okay with fill parent but it's not like super necessary you have to check for example if your button you are planning to have when you have the animation like a big button here so you need to think in the uh, maximum value and the minimum value for this well you add your button you have the button you can, we are going to leave it like that we are not going to use an image and then we are going to go to the blocks okay so ah before that sorry we need to add here in sensors two clocks one clock two clocks and we're going to disable them we are going to disable the other one and i guess we are almost ready to start oh, ah also the interval you can set it to from 10 to 48 it will be okay 10 it will be like really fluid okay 48 it will be okay so i guess we let's set it to then let's be ambitious so now we're going to go here to the blocks in the blocks i started creating some variables the first variable is my spring okay remember the spring then the inertia value we need the inertia value the spring i set it to uh, 0.5 
Oh, thank you. We had a problem, Houston. Some cable, Houston. Then we are gonna go here. We are going to connect again. So we're going to add some variables to control the behavior of the button. Then we're going to go here. Uh, don't tell me that right now the internet is getting slow, but anyway. So we created the first variable is my sprint. Set it to 0.5 just for now. Then my inertia, 0.5. Then we're going to create two variables more. One for X scale and another one for Y scale. Then we're going to start setting everything. As I told you, it has to be responsive. So we need to set everything based on the percentage. We can use percent, but we're going to use the traditional way I usually use. Because sometimes uh, it is better to handle it this way. I will show you later why. Anyway, so we are going to create a result procedure here. Then we are going to call it percent in age or in the height. Then we are going to drag here from math. We are going to multiply values. So then we are going to add also another one that is divided by. This is going to help us to calculate the the percentage. Then we are going to add here a slot, like a variable. Then we are going to call this. This is going to be height. So let's call it uh, my height or the button's height. Anyway, now for this, for the first slot, we are going to use from the screen the height value, the size of the screen, times the. Uh, we are going to use, for example, if I want to set my button to the 20%. It has to be like 20, this is my height. So obviously I need to divide this by 100 to have the percentage from the screen. So we're going to choose this one, 100. Then we're going to do the same for um, for the width. We're going to duplicate this one. Then we're gonna go here, we're going to change the name. Let's call it W and my width. We change here the value, and then you have width. With these ones, we are going to calculate the percentage. So now for the first, for the button, let's make a big button, okay? Then we are going to adjust it if we want. So we're going to use here the height to the, I don't know, maybe to the 40%. We are going to set the initial values for the button. If we, we can do it. Then we're going to use the procedure for the width and we're going to duplicate this one. Then we change to width, then destroy this one. Then we just save it here. And what about 60%? We do it and we have a big button. Nothing fancy, nothing else. That's it. Now, What's next? We're going to start with the procedures, okay? So we're going to start. The first thing, when I click on the button, okay, I want to uh, to start uh, the animation and the clocks are going to help us uh, with the animation. So when I touch down, okay, I'm going to start with the animation. So let's start with this. So we're going to, First, we are going to make sure we have these values for the initialize, okay? So just in case we have modified uh, something, we're going to use here from the button, touch down. Then we're going to duplicate these ones. This is just to avoid things that when we resize, okay? So, but, well, anyway, then we are going to use the clock number two or the clock number one. First, the clock number one, that is the first that it's going to start the animation. We're going to enable this. We're going to set it to true. And also we have to think, probably we have finished from another procedure. 
so we just in case we need to disable the clock number two okay so at the beginning it's not going to be like useful because it will be like uh, disabled but later on we need to disable it so that's it clock number one now we have to go to clock number one what is going to happen with clock number one well ah there is another thing when I touch down okay I start the proceed uh, I start working with the animation okay so I initialize the animation but when I touch up I have to finish the animation well to touch up we have to finish the animation so we are going to do this we are going to go for touch up and then we are going to stop okay um, a clock number we are going to duplicate clock number two and we are going to enable this clock because this is going to finish the animation okay so this is starting and then this is finishing and the clock number two it will be in charge of finishing the animation clock number one initializes the animation then <coughs> we duplicate this one and change to clock number one we disable of course the clock number one okay now we are going to go now for clock number one the one that it's going to be like enabling here we're going to move this now let's keep it like that so we go for clock number one and the procedure oh sorry sorry clock number one and we are going to insert here in clock number one some uh, blocks to make the magic happens the first thing okay now the original height okay when we touch uh, height and width or the size of our uh, button it is like 40 percent times 60 percent now we need to think about the final the final height and the final width for the button so we are going to duplicate the final height so i want to reduce them to half okay so i'm going to set it to the 20 percent of the screen for this value and the other one to 30 percent for the width that's it i don't know if i disable the clock yes they are disabled but uh, they are working because i maybe i activate them so we are going to disable them now this is the values that we want to get when we finish the animation the original values are these ones from this to this we are going to pass like in an anim animation okay in a rebound effect so now what's next well so clock number one oh this is clock number one oh sorry i made a mistake this is clock number two clock number two is the one that it's going to finish sorry we duplicate this one because we are going to have it and clock number one it will have the original value sorry from this value that is 40 60 to this value okay so now let's start adding more blocks to clock number one and you will see the first thing is we are going to modify the variable set x scale and we're going to do this we're going to <clears throat> change okay what we are going to change uh, i mean the size that we want to uh, we're planning to reduce okay so the first thing that we're going to do we're going to use here uh, subtraction here we're going to subtract and then we're going to use the value from the width remember the width that we want to reach that is 30 so we're going to use 30 in here in clock number one minus the current width of my button okay so the 30 percent of my mm, of the width of my button minus the button width then you are going to uh, multiply these values we're going to use here multiply and then we're going to insert this and we're going to multiply this value times the global spring we go for my spring global my spring and finally 
we are going to uh, add here at the end this simple thing we are going to add the product of global x scale the one that we are just calculating time uh, by the inertia and we are going to drop it right there so again the global x scale so that means that we are going to change the width because it's the width it is connected with the x so we use the 30 percent minus the buttons width times the global my spring plus okay the global x scale plus the inertia and that's it for the y it is the same so we are going to duplicate and just adjust from y scale in this case it is not 30 because in this case it is the one that we want to reach that is 20 so and this in h we drag this guy we set it to 20 now it is not the buttons width it is the buttons a uh, height then global spring it is the same y scale and again times the inertia that's it and finally we are going to refresh these results in the buttons width okay so how well we are going to go for buttons width first set buttons width pass the width of the button the current width of the button plus the x scale okay this kind of factor thing. then we duplicate this and we do the same for the height we just change from the drop menu height height and y so mm, we are quite done in this part just let me move my blocks and that's it now for the button number two or for the clock number two this is just the starting thing we can duplicate again the global x scale now because it's a rebound remember it is going from one animation to the other one from so now we are going to return okay so we are like mirroring this thing so if you check here so we are going to go and we're going to duplicate these ones but the values remember i changed from clock one i have the highest value and here i have the minimum value now in this case inside i have to have the biggest value that i have in the other clock that is for example for the width it is 60 and i let the other things the same then i just duplicate this one the global y scale and i do the same so i look for the maximum number that is for the height it is 40 and i just update this thing 40 and the rest i guess it is quite the same so no need to move and i guess we are almost ready to try so let's refresh just the screen just in case and then we have locks and then we just touch here now we need to check what's happening because it is not like returning so we are going to check this First, when we touch down, we disable the clock 2 and we enable the, to uh, the clock 1. Then when we touch up, we enable this and we disable this. Then the clock 1, it will have these things. I know what it's missing. We need to refresh the values in the width and the y. So from the first one, I just drag them here 
and we have that thing. Now it is not like showing really well because you have in your button, let me check uh, here in the blocks. Let's go to the beginning in uh, initialize and we are going to add this thing. Let's remove this and we are going to add here from button. We go for show feedback and we are going to set show feedback, show feedback to false that's it then we just press ah we need to do it oh, but it's when we have an image so anyway we can just drag the image from Kirby just to show you this thing it looks better not with this white thing so uh, bottom 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 image Oh, show feedback, but I don't know if it's going to work. No. So just let's set it here. Color change. OK. And then we have here the thing. We just remove the text. And we just press in here. If you check, it is pretty similar to this one and we can adjust the values okay here in the blocks actually we're going to make something extra just for you guys so we'll go here and we're going to draft another uh, layout horizontal arrangement we're going to drag it over there here I, ah, it's because it's like full screen so we're going to set this uh, I remember the button it is like 40 right so let's set it to 50% of the screen and I guess it will be okay for Kirby I don't know yes it's okay for Kirby it is fit in there now for this one we are going to set it to fill parent for width Hmm, I'm thinking, no, probably I need a vertical arrangement, sorry. Here, and we're going to delete the horizontal arrangement. Then we're going to set it again to fill parent for the width, fill parent. And then we're going to drag from the user interface two sliders. One slider and second slider. My password text box, sorry. Uh, I mean, slider. We have two sliders. And the value, uh, the minimum value, it will be like, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible to set it to point one and the maximum value 2.9 we do the same for the other one 0 0.1 0 0.9 we're going to set the position in 0.5 the position for the other one in 0 0.5 0 0.5 i guess that's okay we can set them to the 80 percent of the with 80% well we have these guys over there color orange probably white and color right probably something green probably or yellow like that so something white from the left to something green that's it we just check color left color right they are visible then we go to the screen number two 
uh, I mean so to the blocks here in the blocks we are going to set the sliders we're going to change the position of the slider one slider one it will be connected to the spring so set variable spring global my spring to get the position then we duplicate this one and we're going to connect slider number two to the inertia to the time position okay so I'm um, basically that it's the idea probably we are going to add here a, um, probably a label so for this one what if we call it inertia now the, the first one it is spring right and the second label it will be uh, inertia then we just set it to 20 so I am using tablet probably that's why text looks a little bit small I guess that's okay just for this tutorial it's okay so then we are going to refresh here the text of the label text 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 label 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 let me just drag it in here text and we're going to use the global my spring then we're going to duplicate this guy and we're going to use a label two and my inertia so every time we move this thing we update this information well the first one is the spring so probably to make it clearer uh, we're going to join this information and we're going to use here a text that it says spring and then another one for um, for the inertia we drag it drag it here and then we just call it inertia that's it and if we move this thing we have the values now let's see what's happening when we get it to 9 inertia 1 and this one just like this check the difference now if we have spring point one check now it is quite slow now let's set it to point five then we are going to move this to point nine the inertia and it will bounce and bounce and bounce our 2.1 check so and if we move it just like a little bit that's it so we set it to 0.5 then we just can adjust the things here for example And it looks really good, believe me. I had an app. I will share the link with you that I did. It was for a gallery or something like that. And I was using this, okay? Probably opposites. Now these opposites. By the way, you, you set the inertia to point 0.1, well, you it will be like bouncing forever and ever. So we just set it to this. Probably something like this. I guess it is quite similar to the one in the website. Cool. 
house it looks a little bit like choppy in some parts anyway i guess that's all for today i hope you liked the tutorial this thing it can be like very useful or to make your apps look a little bit better okay when we were making the uh, when i made this thing the first time i remember some friends uh, from app, Inver <coughs> app inventor they say that you could use this thing for probably just for an intro okay just for an intro or for some little things here like animations so or i don't know maybe you need to think more about how to use this thing my name is eduardo i hope you enjoyed this thinkable tutorial also for app inventor okay and for happy builder too okay so uh, my name is eduardo as i told you and please check my other tutorials, I have some interesting things, okay? Not only about uh, Thunkable, also about Scratch. I am making some tutorials about Scratch, okay? So I'm not an expert in Scratch, but I am enjoying uh, learning this thing. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye.